right, so I've yapped on and on about the differences between these between these guns, and uh, I'm going to kind of take this one and leave it out for the moment because what I'm about to tell you doesn't really apply to this one, mostly because this gun likes loose powder, and that's the way I load it, and that's a whole different ball game. I'll get into that in a minute. So I guess probably the big thing about muzzle loading that people uh, don't like is probably the fact that they think it's a single shot and that's all there is. You can actually reload one of these in about 30 seconds after your shot. You have to be careful, actually, and make sure that there's no embers burning in there. <laughs> you don't want to be dropping powder down there if there's still sparks in there, of course, because it could you know, obviously blow up in your face. So if I were in the woods and I needed a follow-up shot, what I do, when I'm setting out like in the morning to go hunting or not even, even if it's, the gun might have been loaded for days. It's just not prime. But typically at the beginning of the season, I will load the gun with powder and bullet here at home at the house. And I'll use either loose primer or uh, loose powder or, uh, or pellets. It doesn't really matter. So what I will do is I will uh, drop two pellets in. I'll put a bullet in, push the bullet all the way down. You always want to make sure... It goes all the way down, so you make sure there's no space in between your powder and your bullet. That's how people get hurt with these things. I recommend marking your rod that you use that's underneath your barrel for length. That way, for instance, this one, I know that if I drop that all the way in there when it's not loaded, it goes right out of sight, right? So I know it's not loaded. If it stopped and there was this much sticking out, uh-oh, that means there's powder and a bullet stuck in the bore. So you want to remember that because you don't want to make you don't want to put two in there at the same time. So it's a good idea to know how long your barrel is in relation to your rod that they give you. And then that comes to what happens after you've shot at a deer in the field and you've either wounded it or you didn't get it. Now you need to reload. Obviously, if it was a regular single shot rifle, you'd pull a, another round out of your pocket and you'd stuff it in. This is a lot the same. It really isn't that much different. What I'll do, you can buy ready-made stuff. You know, I usually don't. I use, I'm cheap, so I use these, uh, this is a drill box. Originally, it had like one-eighth inch drills in it, and I get them from work. Any place that sells muzzle loader supplies will have these things called speed loaders. that are essentially the same thing. So what I'll do is, I'll take two of these powder pellets, and I'll drop them in there like that. And then I'll drop the bullet in on top of them, just like that. And then I'll plug it, and I'll have that in my pocket, ready to go for another shot. Now, I'll carry two or three of these around with me, even though the gun is loaded. So now I know that, you know, I've got a deer that I need to shoot a second time, or I need to reload. So the primer is already expended. You've fired your round. You open this up, take your bullet out, drop your two pellets down the bore, Put your bullet in, ram it home. Then all you have to do is put your primer on and you're ready to go. And it's almost that quick. It's less than a minute, I guarantee you, every time. Now that's that's with a modern inline using pellets. You can do the same thing with loose powder. And I do it that way with this one. But you have to kind of keep the bullet and the powder separate. So I'll use one of these little containers and I'll just load my... 90 grains of powder loose in that container and have the bullets in another in another pocket. That way I can take this, dump the loose powder right down the barrel of this one, ram the round home, you know, the, the projectile, then I can put the percussion cap on the back of it and it's ready to go again. So it's really not much longer. The more you use them, the more it becomes second nature. But there is a downside. Black powder is very corrosive, and it needs to be cleaned up, not after every shot, really, but after every time, and I, I usually clean it at the end of every season. If I don't see a deer and the thing stays loaded all season, I don't, lose, I don't leave it that way. In the off season, I'll shoot it, and I'll clean it, and then put it away for storage. 
Uh, some people leave theirs loaded and then uh, they never really know whether it's going to go off or not. can pick up moisture, you know, and uh, you, you don't want that because then you'll have to find another way to get your projectile and the, the bad powder out. So I don't, I don't leave powder in them over the, over the off season. I won't do it. But uh, the upside to them being corrosive, everything, like I said before, is biodegradable for these. So the stuff that you use to clean these, instead of using hoppies like number nine bore cleaner or Shooter's Choice or Birchwater KC, whatever you happen to use, you basically use soap and water for this. Even the bore cleaner that you buy from Thompson or from any of the companies, basically it's a really strong detergent in water. So that's what you use to get rid of your corrosive salts and all of your black powder residue and all that stuff. Soap and water. So it cleans up with soap and water. So a lot of people, they'll actually clean their black powder gun in their bathtub or their sink, kitchen sink. I've seen it done many times. Put a couple of wet patches through the bore until, you know, you're satisfied that everything's good and moist. Then uh, run a couple of clean ones through it until it comes out clean. Then put it someplace to dry. You know, you want to, the hotter the water is you use, the better because, you know, it's going to dry quicker. And the quicker it's dry, the you know, less chance you have of that rusting. Think of a bore and a barrel on a muzzle loader is like seasoning a cast iron frying pan. That's what I was told when I was a kid, and I found that to be pretty much true. The more you use one and the more you lube it, the less problem you're going to have. And that's another thing. The lube that you use, like the oil, instead of using an oil, you want to use... Uh, I've seen people use Crisco, Bear Grease. I use a Thompson Center product, if I don't know if you can still get it or not, but I've got plenty of it, called Boar Butter, number 13 Boar Butter, I think it's called. Uh, it actually smells kind of minty, like uh, uh, Icy Hot, or like uh, Skull Chewing Tobacco. And it's edible. The stuff is, I mean, I wouldn't sit down and eat a spoon of it, but I mean, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you. You clean it inside and out with that. Put a good uh, thick coating of it on there. And then, just like with a frying pan, you get rid of all of the excess, all of the uh, excess garbage so that it's basically just, you know, shiny. And that's how you leave it. And that makes, that makes it load easier. And that makes it more accurate. And it keeps it from rusting. And it's just, uh, like I said, it's just like a cast iron frying pan. Now, if it's been sitting and it's got a good uh, liberal dose of that bear grease or boar butter or whatever in the barrel, I would advise you at the beginning of the season to always run a clean patch through that bore without any bore cleaner, just a clean dry patch. And that will wipe any of that excess grease out of there, the bore grease, and then put a cap back where the percussion cap or the primer goes and fire just the cap through there and that'll blow any residue out of that, that residue out of that little orifice and you know that that firearm's going to go off the next time you use it. Once you do that, you go ahead and load it and you're, uh, you're good to go. And that's how you basically fire and load a black powder or a muzzle loading firearm. When I do have a session like that, like when I'm target shooting with them, I'll take a rod out on the uh, deck or wherever I'm going to target shoot. And between shots, I'll run a dry patch down the bore just to get rid of the excess goo from the burned black powder that's going to build up in there. You don't have to, but it makes them load a lot easier if you keep that bore clean. Every shot you make, you can feel that next bullet go in harder and harder and harder, and it'll kick more, actually, as you, because there's more resistance, makes a tighter bore as it closes in from being dirty. So I'll, I'll dry patch them. I'll swab them out like they did with cannons in the old days. And it also gets any, any embers and stuff out of there to keep you from uh, pre-ignition, so to speak. So one other thing I forgot to mention, I will, uh, I will usually take all of my extra stuff that I need to reload and any of the other gadgets that I might need in the field, I'll take them with me in a little pouch. 
I have one that actually hooks onto my belt. I think it's, I don't know if it was supposed to be a cell phone or a radio pouch, but it's about yay big and it will hold any of the tools and any of the stuff that I need. Speaking of that, this is a tool from either uh, Thompson Center or might have been from CVA. I think I said this, this one is from Thompson Center. As you can see, it holds, it holds these inline 209 primers in the handle. And then these other little things that you see here on the end, those are made to hold them. And you actually stick one in there. And instead of having to get those little primers in the back with your fingers, you stick this in there and then pull it off. That lets you uh, get it in there if you can't get it with your fat fingers. That lets you prime it. But it also holds your extra primers. And again, here's a metal one that does the same thing. You have this end. There's a pick that's used to pull the used primer out if it's stuck. And then as you can see, there's a little spring on the back here. And you can put a live primer in there and it'll hold it right there. You can stick it in the end of your in the end of your breech plug and then pull it right off and your and your gun is primed. So those are important tools to have, one or the other. And I also usually carry one of these. This is what's called a ball starter. And as you can see, it's got pieces of brass that thread on. You have to, uh, they'll come with several different types and angles of uh, brass tooling. You want to find the one that fits the bullet that you're using the best. That's why there's different ones. Some for hollow points, some for conical bullets, some for balls. Uh, you'll, once you start your ball in the barrel, you use this one to get it in there straight. And then this one gets it in there and gets it a good ways down the barrel straight. Then you can switch over to using your ramrod. You don't always need these. One of the reasons I use power belts is because most of the time, power belts I can load with my fingers and just my ramrod. And it keeps me from carrying around this ball starter. But it's still a good thing to have. You know, a lot of people will run a rope or a piece of string through these holes and they'll hang it around their neck, do whatever. But it's a common tool for muzzle loading. And now on to the cleaning. Don't forget to check with your individual safety manual. It comes with your black powder firearm to check with factory recommendations. If you've enjoyed this video, come on back and check out part four in our final installment in black powder muzzle loading firearms.